Welcome. Welcome back to Hyperbaric Living Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Masha, and today I have with me Cassandra from Colorado. Uh, we're back with patient stories. It's an amazing story. I heard this story on a podcast that I did with Misha Tate, and now I have Cassandra with me, the actual patient that we talked about during the podcast. Welcome to the show, Cassandra. No, thank you so much for having me. People learn from other people's stories and people get inspired by other people's stories. And that's why it's so important um, that we share those stories, those amazing hyperbaric stories. And uh, you have your story, which uh, really gave me goosebumps when we were recording the podcast with Misha. So please share your story. Like, how did you get to know about hyperbarics? Why did you use hyperbarics? Well, so I, um, I suffer from several different autoimmune disorders, and one of those is Hashimoto's thyroidism, and I gained a lot of weight really quickly after having my daughter, and it took a very long time and a lot of dedication to lose enough weight to opt into a mommy makeover. And part of my decision for that is because I have lupus also. And so I had a lupus rash on the bottom part of my stomach that we could not under any circumstances get to go away because the tissue had just attacked itself. And so my doctor said that a mommy makeover with removing that part of the stomach would help um, it for a longer term. And so my husband and I discussed it and decided to do it. And unfortunately, um, even though we chose an amazing doctor and he did the best that he could do with what I had to give him, um, I had a micro clot in my entire areola and nipple and part of my stomach. And so my surgery took longer than it should have. And that was on a Thursday. By Saturday, he had reopened my wounds and my tissue was, in his term, gone. And by Monday, we would have to shave it off. So that means that I would have lost my entire right nipple, um, including the areola. And um, my husband, of course, was um, just as concerned as I was and was trying to offer me his nipple and do a skin graft or whatever it was that we needed to do. Um, and so us being experienced with my autoimmune disorder and taking different paths than just what your doctor recommends, doing more healthy things and healthy living than just taking a prescription. We asked him if there were any other options, whether it was a leech, even if we could try that before we resort to just shaving off the tissue. Remembered Amy, who's also there with Misha and is, I believe, part owner of the Desert Wellness Center. And he called her at, I think it was 11 o'clock at night on a Sunday when we were in the emergency room with him. And she called me right after he got off the phone and set me up with an appointment first thing, 9 a.m. Monday morning. And after one session, so we, I showed up and we did a red light therapy on those affected areas. And then I did one session of the hyperbaric, I think it was 90 minutes. And my tissue started bleeding again. Wow. Okay. I have goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just, you know, what blows my mind? One session. One session. One session. So, yeah. Yeah. That's... And so I went in four hours later, we did another session and I did two sessions a day for an entire week and we saved my nipple. Well, congratulations. So, thank you. So because of 
Misha and that whole team, I was able to not have my nipples shaved off and um, save that area. Unfortunately, I did lose some tissue around the areola, um, but my stomach and my nipple and everything else has been saved after that one session. And do you remember what pressure did the, um, uh, did it go up to? Um, you know, I don't, because they do, I think it's like two point something. I don't know how they describe it. Um, but the second session after we knew the first session went really well, um, they actually pushed it a little further for my second session just to really push um, the blood into those areas. Um, since we had experienced some bleeding in that tissue, it was really exciting. So they pushed a little bit further just to hopefully get it in the other areas. And then also, you know, with my autoimmune disorders, I suffer with inflammation throughout my entire body. And at the end of that week of doing two sessions a day, I had never seen more definition in my ankles since before I was pregnant, which was 12 years ago. So it didn't just help with the fact of saving dead tissue, but it reduced my inflammation throughout my entire body. And for that to happen post a major surgery with a tummy tuck and a breast augmentation is crazy to me because there's no, there's no form of medication that I've ever been given since I was 15 and diagnosed that has helped me in a way that the hyperbaric chamber has in just one week. And this is so powerfully said, and you actually answered my next question, because my next question was his first thing, uh, red flag, autoimmune disease. So my next question was, did you notice any other improvements? Because I'm thinking, yeah. okay, hyperbarics should help with yeah. autoimmune. Yeah. So what, when you referred to that your inflammation was down, um, what else have you noticed? Yeah. So I, like I said, I could finally see my ankle bones, um, my rings, uh, my ring finger for my ring was fitting better. Um, I mean, post you, you've seen those chambers, right? So it's that long tube that you have to crawl into if you don't have one of those ones that inflate and you zip yourself into. Uh, and so I was crawling in and out of this chamber on all fours twice a day, every day, post-surgery, just three days out of surgery. And I was able to do that, physically move like that after a major surgery. So that alone, like when I'm over the weekend before this treatment, I need help sitting up out of bed because I can't use these muscles that have been cut for the surgery and swelling of the tissue. I didn't even use ice packs after my surgery um, because I didn't need it. The swelling had just gone down. There were certain days where if I did do too much that I'd still get a little bit of inflammation in my hips post-surgery. But um, I, I hadn't experienced inflammation relief in 12 years. Wow. Wow. That's so, really, really powerful. And yeah. have you continued with hyperbaric sessions when you got home? So I wasn't allowed to, my doctor had me stay. I got my surgery on July 21st and we didn't get back until a week and a half ago back home. So I was there for over a month. And so we did, um, I believe two and a half weeks of sessions um, with the hyperbarics while I was there. And then the doctor asked me to stop the hyperbarics since I was coming back home and I wasn't going to have it here just to make sure that my body was doing what it needed to do on its own at that point. And yeah. looking back, I know that you were under a lot of stress and maybe pain and, and after the surgery, but do yeah. you remember your first session? Were you scared yeah. to get inside a hyperbaric chamber? Um, no, I think at that point, I was just determined to, to try anything to save the tissue. That 
it didn't, it didn't matter to me. I mean, you could have told me I needed to swim with a shark and I would have done it. So <laughs> I, I would, that I, wouldn't help you save the tissue though. <laughs> right. But, but I'm just saying like, I, at that point I was so desperate, I would have tried anything. So no, I crawled right in and the experience was, um, you know, they told me it was like flying in a plane. Mm -hmm. with the pressure. Um, so I just brought a water bottle in there with me that had a cap and I kept the cap off of the water bottle because you don't want it to compress. Um, and waited for the pressure to stop. And every time my ears felt a little bit of pressure, I just took a drink of that water and I was fine. So that's what I did for every single one of my sessions. I didn't experience anything other than air pressure. And it was actually, um, a very comfortable, I don't know, space to be in. I always took like the best naps when I was in there. <laughs> so I think I slept better inside the chamber than I did at home in my own bed. My bruising disappeared. So, you know, right after surgery, I had the black and blue bruising in all of the areas. And that first week of treatment, all of my bruising was completely gone. I'm not saying I wasn't still tender, but for your bruising to leave completely, you couldn't physically see any bruising on my body. That's insane. Yeah. Natural therapies many times take longer to see yes. the results, but it's yeah. not true for hyperbarics. Even though hyperbarics yeah. is completely natural, it uses pressure and oxygen, we usually see results right away. Right. Yeah, And I think that's another benefit of hyperbarics. Right. Um, and it's important because sometimes, you know, it, it's tiring, especially if you've been sick for a long time and then you start doing something new, but then it takes a long time to see results. Yes. You get discouraged, but not with hyperbarics. Yes, absolutely. And um, my husband and I are talking about trying to um, find one to put in our home so that we have it because he also has inflammation in his back. He's a manual worker, so he has his own um, issues as well. I just don't think I could get him in it because he's claustrophobic. <laughs> But um, hopefully after him seeing the benefits of it, I could hopefully get him in there one day. But I definitely want to get one for myself. Absolutely. It's it's a good yeah. idea, both for wellness, disease prevention, and to help yeah. you recover in your recovery from autoimmune disease. Yes. I think it's great. And with claustrophobia, there are ways to manage that. I talk mm -hmm. about it a lot because I'm claustrophobic myself. I think it took me first time I got inside the chamber, it took me three days. Yeah, I to bet. actually be able to close, and that was the soft chamber, which is even easier yeah. to close the yeah. zipper. But there are ways to overcome it. Um, right. Yeah, I have a video on that. Um, it will take time, and only two percent of people suffer from claustrophobia. But right. most of them, like ninety-nine percent of that two percent, are yeah. able to overcome claustrophobia and use a hyperbaric chamber. But I should say that you say that you were amazed um, by its effects. And yeah. we're seeing this almost every day and we're still amazed every day. I'm like, wow, yeah. it works. It works. Look like at the amazing results. It works. Right. And it's really rewarding too to see people get it, better. And I can't tell you how close I became with the staff there. I mean, it was it was a true care process. I mean, for her to call me, for Amy to call me that night at 1130 at night and tell me to be there at 9am. I mean, that just shows how much like this team is doing this, not just to do it. They truly care about you. And you feel that when you walk in that door with this team specifically, they just, Everybody cared every single day. I came in and I felt like I was being treated like a celebrity. <laughs> like I was walking in with my walker and they were taking my bags and sitting me down on these really nice chairs and just anything I needed. They were right there. They, they were texting me at night after my sessions, asking me how I was feeling. I mean, the level of care that shows you right there that the people who are in this industry aren't doing it because they're paid like doctors to do it. They're doing it because they've personally experienced it. 
they're seeing these successes and they're doing it because they care. They want you to leave there and not come back because you're okay. It didn't just save me and save my tissue. It changed the way I will look at future care for myself and for my family. Guys, if you like this episode, please give it likes because it would allow more people to see it. And if you know someone who might benefit from this information, please send them a link. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. Thank you.